What is up, everybody? Short intro today. We're gonna to be talking about Untouchables, the Untouchables on 4K Blu-ray, and is it worth the upgrade from the 1080p Blu-ray? Well, let's talk about it. What is up everybody? I just wanted to do a quick little review here. Nothing too in depth, not like my 20 minute reviews. But uh, yeah, it's late in the night. Got myself a uh, got myself a cup of tea. So uh, hopefully uh, this doesn't go so badly. But yes, Brian De Palma's classic 1987 movie, The Untouchables, flipped the gangster movie on its head by showing the perspective of the cop's perspective of, you know, taking down Al Capone, who is brilliantly played by Robert De Niro. There is not enough Robert De Niro in this movie, which is one of its sins, but it is such a great film. I absolutely love it. The writing itself holds it down, but you're not here to learn about the movie. If you're going to be picking this up on 4K Blu-ray, you probably already really enjoyed this film because you can get the standard edition, the 30th anniversary that was released five years earlier, for dirt cheap. I found it at a drugstore, the standard Blu-ray, for like five bucks. So yes, The Untouchables on 4K. Let's get into the tech specs. This is a single disc set, no Blu-ray does come with a digital code and what bummed me out originally when I was looking at the specs that this is a UHD 66 dual layer disc as opposed to you know like a hundred layer disc but this is an older film this is 2160p 4k digital intermediate this does support Dolby Vision HDR and HDR 10 this is in 235 by one so you are going to get those black letterbox bars the audio formats are Dolby Atmos True HD 7.1 Digital 5.1 and Spanish Dolby Digital 2.0 Mono. So there you go. Now in this 4K review, we're going to be talking about three criterias. The image quality, the HDR, and the audio. Starting off with the image quality. This is, in fact, a new 4K restoration. And it shows, I mean, there's so much detail from facial features, but not only from close-ups, but also from wide shots. That opening scene where Robert De Niro is getting shaved, you can see like imperfections and like dots on his nose and wrinkles and stuff from far away, which is actually very impressive. You know, other sorts of things like wrinkles and facial imperfections are very visible. Clothing detail also looks really great. You know, especially during this time, you know, the 1920s with pinstripes and polka dots and all that stuff you can clearly see there's a lot of depth and detail within clothing so that looks really good and what's also really fascinating is that those little fabrics here i'm gonna get my towel the little fabrics in a towel like this you can see all these little like frays of like fabric and stuff from far away which is very nice you know i will say the biggest improvement from the blu-ray is how much depth there is when it comes to the background shots. You know, in the 4K, the foreground details are very discernible as opposed to the background. When it comes to the standard Blu-ray, everything feels kind of like a soft mess of in between and you know background and foreground stuff here you can obviously tell the cinematography work is very nicely done so you will see very sharp very in focus shots with a softer background that still has nice detail you know in this 4k shines a spotlight on the amazing cinematography by stephen h burham who is also known for his works in Hoffa and Rumblefish, two very great underrated films. This also adds another point to this transfer and how immersive everything is. So the set designers clearly put a lot of effort and creativity into this film. Little details such as appliances, cars, signs, and everything in between with this 4K transfer, uh, it no longer feels like a blur as opposed to the standard Blu-ray. Everything looks great, very sharp, very nice looking. And now the elephant in the room. I know a lot of people were talking about this on the 4K uh, Reddit group. A lot of people were saying on how grainy it is. Well, I mean, to be fair, this is a movie made on 35mm, made 35 years ago. But I would not say that this is the level of... Uh, Die Hard. Die Hard was grainy and it was so grainy that you lost detail. Untouchables is definitely grainy. So if, if you're a grain hater, this actually 
may, this may not be for you. I mean, grain is to be seen in every single shot, but it didn't feel like it was such like a uh, a detriment to the transfer and to more of the like artistic sequences and choices of making movies on film. Like as I said, when you when you watch or not when you watch when you see a painting and you're able to see the brush strokes instead of watch like instead of looking at like a high fidelity camera like a photograph say so, oh i can see the brush strokes this doesn't look good at all but you know everyone has their own opinions when it comes to that kind of thing so i'm not going to open that whole can of worms but yes this does have grain and but you're still able to see a shit ton of detail within that grain doesn't ruin it it is ha it does have a uh, good structure to it It doesn't feel pixelated and even though this does have a you know a lower capacity disc as opposed to the 100 gigabytes that i'm kind of used to uh it, it doesn't feel too compressed it doesn't feel compressed at all actually but again is it the best film to 4k blu-ray no i mean 2001 definitely still holds up that you know king status but this is still a great looking 4k next we'll get into the hdr and this was very surprising to me because i was very elated to find out that this has a dolby vision hdr hdr 10 plus transfer and i honestly wasn't let down i mean the colors look absolutely fantastic everything pops without having this feeling of being over contrasted you know skin is kept intact no one feels lifeless and yet on the other hand no one has this overly contrasted red look to it so no one looks like a freshly boiled lobster you know these standouts on this hdr on the color palette is definitely the yellows and the reds on this movie they look absolutely vibrant and rich things such as explosions fires and blood look very nice and rich and the biggest uh thing about this dolby vision hdr 10 transfer is that the black levels are so inky they're inky black especially coming from watching the batman on 4k and those gray very grayish black levels seeing this have very inky dark blacks while keeping the detail there is no crush on this there's a couple scenes there's a, a bunch of scenes that take place at night with kevin costner just walking down the street very inky blacks like on on the uh there's it feels like there's like there's like vignetting type kind of like the batman the batman has vignetting but the vignetting is inky black but it keeps the detail again as i said there are scenes with kevin costner walking down you can see the details of the cobblestone you can still see his black suit you can see all the wrinkles and folds and all that stuff you can see the stairs you can see the different levels of gray there is a great shadow detail overall the black levels do an amazing job and if you do look at uh you know blu-ray to 4k those screenshots like if you go to blu-ray.com or something and you see those screenshots you might think yeah it does look darker and i i have hated on you know 4ks that just lower the brightness and that's it they, something like pirates of the caribbean like absolute trash but this is on the other hand it, it, it makes it feel more realistic i mean the standard blu-ray it does look it looks pretty good for being a standard blu-ray but it has this kind of like dreamy like uh, everything feels like it's perfectly shot and the contrast is up and the brightness is up this 4k has more of a realistic tone to it because it's a very realistic movie you know nothing is sugar-coated uh it's very gritty and which resembles and which uh, translates into the 4k transfer but again things like color look vibrant and great white like uh the color white <laughs> sometimes i have to say that because some people get confused uh the whites are also paper white so while the dark uh colors the black levels are inky black the whites are paper white and uh, as opposed to the uh, standard blu-ray the sdr blu-ray the 1080p blu-ray uh it has a grayish tone to it and overall this is just a stellar hdr transfer lastly we'll get into the audio aspect of this uh like the hdr i was stunned to hear that there was dolby atmos and uh, the audio track does live up to those with a fully array uh surround sound setup uh as audio will travel throughout your room uh, everything from dialogue to little tiny sounds are heard with great fidelity gunfire have a nice pop to them explosions will shake up your room and work out your subwoofer so don't be watching this late at night as i did because i was scared in my uh let's just say people weren't uh happy in my house <laughs> so yeah that was the uh technical aspect review of this um video quality is an 8.5 hdr is an 8.5 and audio is a 9 overall i would give this transfer an 8.5 
This is not going to be the greatest, best four K film to four K transfer. But what it is for being a gritty, raw telling of a gangster film, for being set in the 1920s, this is definitely everything I was hoping for within a 4K. Looks absolutely great. I would say the worst thing about this, though, is the bonus features. I mean, there is barely anything. I think there's like 40 minutes of bonus features, which is usually like, oh, what do you expect from that? It's just like a, a movie. But this was released under the uh, moniker of being third, the 35th anniversary edition. Uh, so I did, I do wish that it did come with a separate Blu-ray bonus disc. But again, uh, you know, for being 20, again, this is like $25 4K. So that also kind of heightens the, the rating because it is cheaper. I mean, even though, you know, uh, 4K releases on catalog movies are, um, you know, cheaper. This does have a fully restored 4K transfer. So that's very nice. Uh, but yeah, just the, um, the bonus features I wish would have been nice. You know, because this is the same old, you know, bonus features. Oh, right. Hear, hear Robert De Niro uh, from, you know, 25 years ago talk about Brian De Palma and how he directs. Stuff like that. I would have preferred to see, you know, you know Kevin Costner in 2022 talk about, you know, how it impacted his career. Those kind of things, you know, for being an anniversary edition release, I'd hope for some more anniversary edition type styles. But besides that, um, again, I can't really uh, blame it too much for being... Uh, you know, twenty five dollars. It's probably cheaper in America. I have no idea, but uh, it's a great film. It's a, overall this isn't a great film. This is an amazing film. So with a new four K transfer, looks great, sounds great. Um, you know, is this gonna be a demo quality disc? Definitely not. Far from it. Uh, you know, if you are those, because I'm, I'm giving you a realistic, um, you know, rating. You know, in the grand scheme of 4K, this is like 8, 8.5. Um, if you're looking for a super clean, super crisp image, you know, you are still going to get a bunch of detail, but it's not the super crisp, super clean, you know, 4K image. So overall, 8.5 out of 10. That was my review. I highly recommend it for being a great gangster film, great performances, and a a really good looking 4K transfer. And especially for like 20 bucks, I mean, you might as well. But uh, yeah, so that was it. Thank you so much for watching a review of mine. I've been based from the Lockbuster YouTube channel. Let me know down below, did you guys pick up The Untouchables on 4K Blu-ray? Please leave a like if you like this review. Subscribe for more reviews. I have a whole playlist of reviews. And yeah, that was it. I've been Mace from the Mockbuster YouTube channel. Please have yourself a good day, night, evening, afternoon, morning, whenever you watch this. Remember, if you like physical media, please make sure to subscribe for more content. I do, you know, 4K Blu-ray hunts, standard Blu-ray hunts. I go to pawn shops, flea markets. If you're into that, all that kind of stuff, leave a subscribe and uh, I'll be very um, appreciative because, uh, you know, it's free for you. But it means a whole lot to me. Thank you very much. Also, someone commented Batman Forever VHS. So I thought I'd pull out this uh, <laughs> this uh, old school, one of my oldest VHS tapes. And that is the Batman Forever on uh, VHS. I might get the 4K because I actually quite enjoy this film for being what it is. It's one of my childhood favorites. But yeah, anyways, that has been it. See you guys later. Peace, love, long live physical media. Cheers, guys.